Welcome to the High Voltage Light Electric Vehicle Channel. It's been quite a while since I did a video on the 27 motors and people have been asking where we are with them. So this is an update on progress with those. It's funny how everything seems to arrive all at once. So this video will cover the current state of play with regards to the stock 27 motors. I also have the COC photon motor back from repairs. And probably most exciting for people that follow our channel here, I also have the DMO1 here, which is back from tuning with the ASI back 855. So first we're gonna start off with the DMO2, which is on the bike here. And I've been testing various versions of the stock firmware. 2.7 have been sending me various different updates and the latest version of that adds a torque and a speed mode. So essentially, the objective with all this testing is to try and get as refined a feel as possible. The new firmware is definitely a huge improvement over the original firmware that came with the motor I was sent. It's definitely getting closer to the CYC Photon, which as far as I'm concerned, is the setting the standards for conversion motors that have a torque sensor, of which, I mean, there aren't that many really. The main difference between this motor here and this motor here is really the smoothness of the power and the delivery of the power when you're pedaling, particularly um, when you're pedaling slowly um, and cruising up to things like stop signs. But I really do think there is more to be squeezed out of this motor. So anyway, now I have this back I'm going to be able to do some direct comparisons between this motor and this motor, which I think people want to see. Uh, in terms of the CYC Photon, which has been off for repairs with Golden Motor, I'm going to go over the warranty process and how the repair experience was for me, how long the process took to complete, and we'll also look at how it is when it's back on the bike. From what I've been told, it was the hall sensor inside the motor that was replaced. And I'm glad I sent it in because if I had been sent out the controller, which was initially offered, it would have pretty much wasted everyone's time because it wouldn't have actually fixed the problem. The most exciting part though, for this video certainly, is the DMO1 here. And this is just back from Greg and it's been tuned to run with the ASI back 855. And I think there's quite a lot of people on the channel that have been kind of waiting for this to be done. And I, I've definitely been waiting for this to be done. Um, so the DMO one here, uh, it's a little bit different to the BBS HD and it has a 40 to one gear ratio rather than a 22 to one gear ratio. And the effect of that is that the RPMs at the crank is about 300 RPM max with this one and the BBS HD, it's about 600. So about half. And the upshot is that the one-to-one -one gear ratio that I normally use with the BBS HD is not gonna be, I don't want, it, it's not gonna be as effective with that because uh, that ratio would net you about 60 kilometers an hour on the flat. And therefore it's gonna be around 30 kilometers an hour on the flat with this one. I mean, that would also potentially give it huge climbing abilities, but I think really with this motor, you're gonna need gears, uh, which is good because the bike that it's gonna be going on initially, uh, which is this one here, already has a gear set at the back to test it with. So it's gonna be really fun trying different ratios with this motor. It's gonna be fun in general, trying a brand new motor um, that's never been used with one of these in the wild before. So I'm, I'm really excited to get this on a bike and get that tested. Before I do get it on the bike though, there are a few design tasks to do. Um, the way this motor assembles, um, the casing for the motor is held together with the controller in place as well. So I'm gonna have to come up with something for the controller cover that allows you to get this nice and tight to keep the motor together firmly. Um, but I've got a few ideas, so I'm gonna be getting that done. Um, I was initially gonna consider hollowing out the uh, stock controller here and using that in place, but that would then have the wires coming out the bottom of the motor, and I really do wanna change the location of where the wires exit so that they are not 
underneath in kind of that exposed location. As well as the tuning for this motor, we do have it also completed for this motor as well. So it's gonna be really interesting to see how this really small motor also takes the, the high power. Like we were getting up to 22,000 RPMs out of that one with the ASI. So it'll be interesting to see if it, if it handles that on the road um, or if it just destroys it. And with both these motors really, they are, they are kind of sacrificial in a way, like they've never been run in the wild with um, something that can put out, you know, 4,000 watts before. So it'll be interesting to see how we push it. I'm gonna take it nice and steady at the start with the field weakening and we'll see how it goes and how far we can go and try and see what the limits are. And it might be that, you know, there will need to be some upgrades made to this. It, it might be that we need to have the peak gear in there. It might be that we need some better bearings um, for bits of it as well. Um, we're really not gonna know um, until that's done, but it's all set up. Um, I have the monitoring uh, for the temperature set up as well uh, for both of these. Uh, it's gonna be really interesting doing the testing and you guys can follow along with that and I will put everything um, on YouTube, you know, whether I wreck them or not, because I mean, th there's no point hiding stuff. So uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens and hopefully there'll be some more on that. Um, I have actually got some studded tires on the way for this bike. So it's gonna let me continue the testing on into the winter a bit longer um, than I would be able to do otherwise. So lots of exciting stuff over the next little while. Um, I'm gonna get the, the photon motor on over the weekend as well and go through, do a bit of a video on the experiences with that. So that's gonna be up next and uh, I'll update on the controller case and getting everything done for this as well. Um, but anyway, um, lots of exciting stuff. Um, I'm excited. Um, hopefully this is all gonna go great and we'll have you know, the option of a new high-powered mid-drive motor. There is one slight disappointment so far uh, with both of these in that right now they're on cadence-based has only so like the traditional 12 magnets in a ring and there is a torque sensor in both of them but we haven't been able to get it to play particularly nicely with the controller yet and we're not quite sure why because as far as we are aware it's wired up correctly but we're not getting a variation in the signal so we've sent the information back to 27 and we're going to see if Maybe something was lost in translation. Maybe the wire is not going to quite to the correct point. Maybe some of the settings we were sent are not correct. Um, Greg has a new version of this motor off with him at the moment. So we're gonna be testing it with the very latest version and hopefully we can figure out the, the torque sensing part because that really is what would stand this motor apart would be the ability to you know put sort of 3000 plus watts through it and have a torque sensor as well, um, because there isn't really a motor on the market that can do that at the moment. So hopefully this will be the one that can do that and uh, we'll update as soon as possible when that happens. So as always, huge thanks for watching and special thanks to the channel members and I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers.